In today's video, I'm going to walk you through setting up a self-hosted agent for running pipelines in Azure DevOps. I'll be using a repository with an initial playwright test environment that I created running npm init playwright at latest. You can use whatever you like, but I'll be working with this repo. It's a simple setup with two tests that verify some text on the playwright website. We'll also be throwing in a MongoDB database for a quick demo of how you can handle services within your pipeline. So, let's get started to get your Azure Dragon of DevOps flying. Go to Pipelines and then click Create Pipeline. We'll use the general Node.js template. First, we'll write the script. We'll install Mongosh so we can check if the database is running on localhost and the default port. Then we'll set up Playwright and finally, we'll execute the Playwright tests. Script's ready to go, let's run it and see what happens. This runs the pipeline in Azure Cloud. But since I don't currently have a subscription, I get the error. No hosted parallelism has been purchased. This is exactly why we need a self-hosted agent to avoid paying for Azure DevOps to run our pipeline. To set up a self-hosted agent, head on over to Project Settings and then Agent Pools. Click on Add Pool and fill in the details. Now we have a pool, but we still need an agent for it. Azure provides installation instructions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm using a Mac, but I ran into an issue with the macOS malware checker going crazy during installation. So we'll switch to my Windows laptop instead. This is probably a temporary bug, but for now, we'll go with the Windows setup. By the way, you could also set up an Azure Virtual Machine or Amazon EC2 instance as your agent. The configuration process would be exactly the same. On my Windows laptop, the first step is to download the agent. It's a zip file. After downloading, unzip it as the next step. I've already unzipped the file, so let's move on to configuring the agent. First up, the server URL. It's the URL of your organization. Just copy it from the browser. Next, we select an authentication type. We'll use PAT, which stands for Personal Access Token. Let's grab that from the User Settings menu. We'll create a new token by giving it a name and defining its scope. We need agent pools and also deployment in case you plan on deploying something with your pipeline. Once the token is created, copy it into the configuration script. Now we need the name of the agent pool, copy that from project settings. I'll name my agent, my laptop. The script also asks for the work folder and whether to run the agent as a service. I'm leaving those at their default settings because we only need the agent for a few runs. The final step is to run the agent. Once it's running, you'll see it online in Azure DevOps. Now back to my Mac, more computing power here. That's why we're switching back. We need to make a few changes to the pipeline YAML. Since the agent will run on my Windows laptop, we don't need to define the image. Next, let's give it the pool name we created earlier, my self-hosted pool. Lastly, we can remove the Node.js installation step because it's already on my laptop. 
And now we're ready to run the pipeline again. The database test failed. That's intentional. I wanted to show you that the services required by the pipeline need to be started first. So let's jump back to my Windows laptop and start MongoDB. I'll fire up Docker Desktop to run the database in a Docker container. Here's the command we need. And there you go. The database is running on localhost on the default port. Let's rerun the pipeline. This time, the database test succeeded. It shows the databases it found, admin, config, and local. And the playwright tests pass too. And that concludes our tutorial. If you found this helpful, please share it with your colleagues. Thanks for watching.